This week's airbrush painting lesson is a great practice piece for any of you new artists out there who are looking to start portrait painting. We're going to be painting one part of the portrait today, which is the ear. And this one is part of a full portrait painting lesson, which is free right here on YouTube. And if you watched that one and maybe found it too difficult or were intimidated to start painting it, just give this a shot. You should be able to paint this in less than an hour. And I think it's a good confidence booster to get you started in portrait painting. Learning to paint the ear is extremely important because it's going to be a part of every single portrait you paint. Up on the screen now is the photo reference for this painting. This video is in 4K, so if you place this in full screen, take a screenshot of it, you'll have plenty of resolution to use as a reference. And of course, here's a gridded version, which is one by one, so you could use this to transfer over to your paper or to your canvas. Painting an ear is actually really simple. It's one of the easiest parts of the portraits for me. It may seem difficult the first time through, but with some practice, you'll get this down in no time. And one of the best things about painting or drawing an ear is that there's a lot of room for error. You don't have to get everything perfect to still make it look correct and realistic. I'm painting here on gessoed canvas. You could of course use any surface you'd like, but make sure you have at least one or two coats of gesso on it so you can use the techniques that I'm using in this one, like soft erasing. So after you have your basic contours drawn out, the first thing I want to do here is kind of map in the edge of the ear. So as you can see, I'm using a shield here and I'm just spraying my paint along the outside edge. If you're not painting this whole portrait, just painting the single ear, just do this around the right side because behind this ear is going to be her hair. The color that I'm using here is black by Createx Illustration Colors and I diluted it about 10% with distilled water. I recommend using Createx Illustration Colors or Comart paints just because they're a lot easier to erase. If you're using a brand like Golden, which make phenomenal paints, I really love Golden, but uh, they they dry to a much harder surface at the end, so they're a bit more difficult to erase or scratch out. For any sort of outer outlines or contours, I like to start with that shield first and then just go over to freehand to spray in the rest around it. So after we have the right side mapped in dark, we're going to start working on the ear. Now I'm going to start by using black just to start getting in some of these cast shadows. While I'm doing this, I'm going to talk about some basic anatomy of the ear. This is absolutely not needed. I'm just going to throw it in because it may be useful to some of you. Right here on the top of the ear, you kind of have this fold over of, of skin and cartilage, and that's called the helix. You can see it starts on the left here and then kind of goes around to the right. So what I'm seeing in the reference photo is that there's a very dark cast shadow here. So using that black, I'm just spraying that in using my shield. Now this bit of cartilage that everyone has right here is called the tragus. You can see it's like kind of protruding here on the left side of the ear. So I'm using my shield to map it in. It almost looks like a, almost like a little triangle tilted over to the right. And I'm placing my shield on the left side, spraying over to the right, giving us a deep dark cast shadow there. So I always recommend starting with a flesh tone and then deepening up colors later using black and sepia. But here for this dark part of the ear, I had black in my airbrush, so I decided to start with it just to kind of fill in these really dark, deep cast shadows because I know eventually I'm going to have to switch to black anyway. So if I can get them done early, I may as well. The light source on this image is over to the left. So we're getting all these dark cast shadows to the opposite side, which is obviously the right. So you can see as this cast shadow goes up, it just kind of stays dark all along the left side here of the ear. So using that black, I'm just lightly spraying it in, not really concerned about overspray. Again, we're going to switch to a different color and we're going to be using some erasing techniques. So this black color will eventually blend in and look more natural. So right now I'm switching over to the flesh tone that I mixed in this full portrait lesson. I'll have a link for that down below. But if you're just painting this yourself, you could mix a very simple flesh tone. If you mix a very simple color like five drops orange, five drops burnt umber, and then a few drops, maybe two of cobalt blue, you'll get a pretty good basic flesh tone for this. So I'm using this flesh tone to fill in the right side here. This dark area is called the scapha. And what it is, is basically like an indentation between the helix and the anti-helix. And just to the left of that, you can see that we have a raised area, kind of like a, a looks like a bump or a hill in the ear. That's called the anti-helix. And what it's doing is casting a shadow off to the right. So this area is going to be dark. And I just want to get this in first. Now, if any of this is confusing or some of these terms you find boring, I do apologize for that. I understand. I get it. I just think the most important thing when you're working on a painting is just to understand where you see lights and darks. You really don't need to know the names of the anatomy. But since I'm doing this and I know these terms, I just figured I may as well throw them in. So I want this area that's kind of recessed in here, which is called the scapha, to be 
really, really dark. You can see the top where the helix is kind of casting a shadow over it. It's almost pure black up there. And then it, as it curves down, it gets a little bit lighter. And then as it moves down further, it gets darker and darker. So what you want to try to do is make sure you get those transitions, those gradients from dark to midtone back to dark shadow again. And with the airbrush, this is going to be a lot easier because you're always going to get those soft transitions from it. And what I want to do is always try to build these values up slowly. I understand that some of these areas here are going to need to be a lot darker, but I'll get to that. I'll eventually spray more and more paint and build them up. A simple way that I like to try to explain what lights and darks do in a painting is that dark areas are always going to seem like they're farther away from you. And then lighter areas are going to look like they're closer or they're protruding from the painting. And once you place those in, you're going to get the illusion that something looks 3D or has the impression of a 3D look. So while you're painting, it's really important just to focus on what you see rather than trying to paint what you think it should look like. Because I know when I've done that in the past, that's usually where I get into trouble and things start getting messy and they start looking strange. So as I'm painting this ear, I'm just kind of constantly looking back at that reference and squinting my eyes. When I do that, it helps me see values a little bit clearer. I can see if the darks are too light or if the lights need to be darkened down a bit. If you're painting in this style, I think it's way more important to trust your eyes rather than trust your mind or your memory. Now as I work my way down to the lower part of the ear, there's another area that's kind of bumped up and protruding. This is called the antitragus. And what's going on here is that it's not that sharp of a transition. This is kind of a smooth gradient here. So the way I want to paint that is just by painting it freehand. If I used a shield for this part, it would be too sharp. So I want to keep the bottom part here pretty soft. That area just above it in that notch is sharp, so you can see I used a shield there to define that area. Going back to freehand, I'm pretty comfortable with the way this is laid out right now. So at this point, I'm going to start spraying in more paint. And I'm just trying to get those darker areas to kind of blend into where these light areas are right now. And while we're doing that, we're just darkening everything up. So basically, as I'm adding these gradients in, I generally start where the shadow is, spray some paint on there, and then slowly move it over to that lighter area getting that gradient. Down here in the earlobe, there's a notch just above it that you can see is kind of in a shadow. So I'm just using the airbrush to spray this in freehand like we did before to slowly darken this up. And as I'm doing this, I'm allowing some of that overspray to get on some of these lighter areas just to help darken them up a little bit more. You can see on the left side here, the earlobe has a sharp transition where it meets the side of the face. So I'm using my shield here just to spray that in and get a pretty sharp line there. At this point, I feel like I have the shadows and these darker areas in the correct places or as close as I can get them. So this is where I'm going to just switch over to freehand and start darkening up all of these areas. When I'm looking at the reference on the left side, I'm paying attention to where I see those really bright highlights. And I'm doing the best I can to just try not to spray too much paint on those areas. The darker paint's always going to be away from it. That's going to give us that 3D look as the shadow kind of folds away. That means the ear is going away from us. And as it gets brighter, it looks like it's, it's moving closer to us. So at this point, we basically have the ear painted in. I didn't use any erasing techniques yet. And you can see it looks good, right? It, it looks like an ear. It's relatively realistic, but I want to push that further. I want to start making those brighter areas look brighter. So the easiest way to do that is to switch over to an eraser and start erasing them out. Just like all my other videos here, I'm using an ink eraser. This is one made by Stadler called the Mars Razor. And I'm starting up here on the helix and just slowly scratching out some of this paint. I don't want to use too much pressure here because I don't want these highlights too bright right away. Now the technique that I'm using here really only works on a gessoed surface. I'm working on gessoed canvas here, but you could just add a layer of gesso on some paper. It'll work exactly the same. But what this gessoed surface allows me to do is to soft erase into it, meaning that I can control how much paint I remove by how much pressure I use. And what I love about this is the amount of control you get because you could really adjust how bright these highlights are just by how hard you press on the eraser. This part is pretty easy. Basically all those shapes are in right now. So what we're doing is we're just coming around and making those lighter areas a little bit brighter. And the way I'm erasing here is that I'm using very small circular motions. You could use any technique you want, but I notice with small circular motions, you get a texture that looks kind of natural. At least it does to me. And while I'm working on this, I just want to go over a question I get a lot on this YouTube channel. And that's for these highlights. Can I use an opaque color? And the answer is, yeah, you could definitely use it. The only problem is you get a strange color shift 
when you use any sort of white paint to give yourself a lighter opaque color. And if you mix that blue gray color with the flesh tone, which is orange, you're going to get a gray because blue and orange are complementary colors. So depending on how much of that opaque color you spray, some areas are going to be grayer than others. And it's going to make the portrait look very strange in the long run. I've done this for years and it's just, it's really annoying and it's, it's kind of difficult to get right. You're constantly having to adjust them and then spray glazes over. But the nice thing is you could avoid all that just by using an eraser. And another nice thing about using the eraser is that it's very quick. You could see that I pulled out all these highlights in probably less than five minutes in real time painting. And it's just nice knowing that I didn't have to mix another light color to spray over the top, you know, something that you'd have to do in traditional painting like oil painting. So that's where we're going to wrap up this one. I know this was a short video this week. I've got some bigger, some cooler ones coming up in the future. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And if you tried portrait painting in the past and you really struggled with it, give this a shot because this is just one part of the portrait broken down and simplified. And I guarantee all of you can paint this. Just take your time on it. Don't rush. And again, never worry about making those mistakes. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you back here next time.